five things that you should already know about Dota 2. But do you? Let's find out in this video if you know these five things coming up. And if you don't, then let me know in the comments which ones you didn't know about. This is part four of this series. So if you haven't seen the other ones, do go and check them out too. If you enjoy this one, they will be linked in the description of this video as well. And finally, do subscribe to the channel as I am posting very regular as a brand new channel. We are growing pretty quickly. So I appreciate all of you guys that have subscribed so far. Anyone else? Get joined in nice and early. I really do appreciate it. Anyway, like I say, you'll probably know most of these things, but hopefully there's something in here that maybe you don't. So let's go. Okay, so tip number one was actually submitted by a viewer, so thank you very much. Your comment will be on screen. I appreciate this one. Now, this is the basically we're going to tie it into two things. Blink itself has a not not a cast time, but a actual rotation time. Now you have to be facing the direction that you blink. No matter what, you will always face the direction that you're going to blink. Even if you blink behind, your character will turn first and then they will blink. So obviously the turn point is going to be a delay in you blinking away. This can be the difference between dodging something like a chrono or dodging something like a projectile stun coming towards your character. Now the reason that we have a puck as the example is because we can show this really well by using phase shift and then having a chrono so if you phase shift and then void chronos you you can blink forward and you can get out of it of course however when we go back inside here if we are facing this way and we want to blink upwards in fact we'll blink down if we're facing up and want to blink backwards and void chronos us we use phase shift void chronos we can't blink backwards because our character will want to turn around first and so you will get stuck in the chrono obviously it blinks afterwards because it is queued but this could be the difference between life and death. So if you are versing a void or you're playing Puck, make sure you're going to blink the way that you're facing as it doesn't have a cast time at that point. It just happens immediately. Making sure you're facing the right way. If you're if you're baiting like a Legion commander blinking on you and ulting and you want to blink away, maybe don't blink behind you as that literal split second and it's going to be different on different heroes could be the difference between dodging the duel. Whereas if you blink forward, it's going to be instant and you'll be absolutely fine. So this one is kind of a two-in-one for you. The first one is I realized very quickly when returning to the game that Windrun no longer actually uh, stops the fountain from completely missing you. You can still die under the fountain. Keep that in mind. What the frick? What the frick? What? Excuse me? Okay, let's get rid of those. Uh, the next one is, this is all for you nasty fountain farmers, by the way. Um, you know, you can also change the aggro of the fountain for someone who is closer to the fountain. So if you run in with Windrun, and then you head up with an axe. You can actually A click on your axe to change the target. And then he can do the same to you. And you can use your wind run again. And you can probably both end up dying. But at the end of the day, you can still pass that on to somebody else. They just have to be closer to the fountain than you are. You can press the A and then left click on them. And it will just change the aggro over just like it would a tower if you do the same to a creep. Okay, so this is the next, next tip. We're going to be talking about neutral items. Now, this is something I don't see anybody do. And if there's a reason, please do tell me. Because, again, I am returning to the game. There could be a reason for this. But once people have moved up the tiers of neutral items, some pretty good, useful, old ones just sit in the, the neutral shop doing nothing. In this example, I'm going to give you um, the dragon scale as a good example. This thing is still useful later in the game. So if you are pushing a lane and you have the dragon scale in your neutral shop, bring it along with you. Because if you're using something like a psychic headband, for example, let's just say this is what you've got as Windrunner. You've got the cast range, you've got the intelligence. It's something that you may pick up sometimes and you're trying to push a lane. Okay, so you're going to push the lane up. But as you get there, you can swap this out with the um, dragon scale and you can start hitting the building and getting some fire damage out of it now there's going to be a cooldown in a regular game when you switch between neutral items but it's not that long and you can definitely do this in advance if you know you're about to get a few free hits on a tower and you know that you're not going to get like a fight you, you know you're okay you can swap these out and you can take advantage of the burn damage that you get from this to push that tower down a little bit quicker and then if you do need to leave you still got a little bit of extra damage ticking away on the tower there's some other neutral items as well you'll have to take a look if there's other ones that will be as useful as this but I don't see anybody taking more than one neutral item with them when it's old stuff. Don't be taking up all of the neutral items for your team. Take stuff that your team isn't using. If you see this sat there doing nothing, take advantage of it. Okay, next up is, did you know that Wraith King actually needs mana to cast his ult at all levels before the 15 minute mark when he will likely buy an Aghanim Shard? Now, to actually get his ult to not cost any mana, he needs an Aghanim Shard. Uh, before that though, he will always need mana for this. 
So you have the first 15 minutes before Shard is even viable to kill this absolute pain in the ass carry or support, depending on what he's being played as, and make sure he cannot stay alive result. If you pick a mana burner before 15 minutes, you can make this guy's life miserable and make him want to quit the game by just burning his mana below 180 at all levels before 15 minutes. This is something that I go out of my way to do if I am versing a Wraith King. I'll use Quas, Wex, Invoker and I'll make sure this guy has this happen to him so many times in the game. Make sure that he's behind as possible because this ultimate is just freaking annoying and getting him to die like this it's just it just feels so good. I, I can't deny it just feels amazing. I hate when you try to focus a Wraith King and he comes back to life. Do this before he can get his Aghanim Shard and then if he doesn't get an Aghanim Shard then well I, he will. He will get an Aghanim Shard. He will have to because if not then GG. Yesterday I posted a video talking about the break debuff. If you don't know about this, it is incredibly strong, so go check that video out. But as an example, did you know that Phantom Assassin cannot use her passive blur and also cannot use her ultimate the crit if she is under the effect of break? So we're going to use Viper here to throw down a nether toxin on the floor, which applies a break to PA. And then during this whole time, she is not going to be able to crit because that is just how the break works. We're going to put this down again to make sure that you can see this. I'm going to put free spells on so we can keep putting this down. And this whole time, PA will not get a single crit off because she is under the effect of break. So if you want to counter some heroes that have really strong passive effects, check out the video that will be linked in the description or the one that I posted just yesterday. And you'll be able to see that you can actually take advantage of this debuff a hell of a lot. It is really freaking good. And a PA that can't crit is just a complete waste of space. And that's good because I hate Phantom Assassin so freaking much. And just so you can see that she can crit, there you go. Now that the break is gone, she is going to be landing some crits. This is a very unlucky PA, but there you go. Hopefully that helps you out. And you can use break in so many ways, so do check out the video. Thank you all so much for watching, guys. I really hope you found the video just as entertaining as you found all the other ones. For anyone who didn't know, there is many more of these on the channel already. And um, I'm just back with my obsession with shackling axe to trees for some reason. But, guys, we are so close to 1,000 subs. I incredibly appreciate the amount of subs and support you guys have been giving. The comments has been unreal. You guys are absolutely brilliant. I'm glad you enjoy the content. And if you did enjoy this one, Please do subscribe to the channel. We will be breaking that 1k sub mark very soon. And I appreciate all of you guys that sub nice and early. Thank you all so, so much. But if you didn't know any of these, let me know in the comments. If you knew any extra ones that you think I should share, then please do let me know in the comments too. And I will use your comment like the other guys that I did at the beginning. Other than that, Axe is going to just stay tied up just a little bit longer. And I'll catch you all <laughs> in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.